So good afternoon, everyone, and really good evening. And I'll tell you about why a good evening in a moment. So this is Audrey Russo, president and CEO of the Pittsburgh Technology Council. And we have been doing this daily noon update every day since, um, since the middle of March. We are pretty excited about today's show as we are every day, but you're gonna, I think you're really gonna be in for a treat in terms of our guests today, as well as the conversation around international, because just because it's COVID doesn't mean that the world isn't tightly connected. And today we will demonstrate that in terms of new relationships that we're building and helping the tech community and the ecosystem become more prosperous and more connected around the world. So, but before I do that, I wanna remind everyone that we are sponsored by Huntington Bank. They have been amazing partners for us right from the beginning. And uh, they have been strong supporters in terms of the issues that have affected businesses since the onset of COVID. And uh, I wanna thank them for their belief in us. And then I also wanna give a shout out and uh, to Jonathan Kirsting, he's joined us today. He's on our team. He oversees marketing and media and he's going to keep the chat alive. So if we have conversations that are starting to occur, he will make sure that we bring those issues to and questions to our guest. So we launched the series just to stay connected and today is no different except it's special in my heart because we're connected outside of Pittsburgh and outside of the United States. And uh, for those of you that know the work that we've done at the Tech Council over the many years, being international citizens and partners with uh, all people around the world is an important part of the work that we do. And today we are gonna dive a little bit of deep in terms of our guests that's here from Qatar. So we've muted your microphones and we do that on purpose. But the other thing we do is we have a chat. This is not an opportunity to sell your wares, but this is an opportunity for you to stay connected and to ask some questions and see where we go from there. Because this is only the first of many, many conversations and people that you will have a chance to meet and be connected with. Because the only way for us to create prosperity in the companies that are being built here is to make sure that we have pathways around the world and the world to us. So I am very, very thrilled. And I am to introduce Alanud. She is here. She's a special guest. She is um, I've had a chance to talk to her once uh, a few weeks ago, and as a result of our Sister Cities initiative that's right here in Pittsburgh, thanks to Kathy Risco. But we are very excited because of the possibilities. So we are before we jump in and really talk with Shika Alanud, I really want to just get to know a little bit, everyone to get to know a little bit about her. She has a tremendous background and what she brings to the table is really noteworthy. So the other thing is it is 8 p.m. there. So she is joining us right at the end of her day. So I deeply appreciate that. So Shika Alanud, thank you so much for being with us today. And it is really lovely to meet you. And I like to think of you as a new friend. And uh, I think when people hear from you, they're gonna feel the same exact way. So tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do and what your journey has been up until this date. Just a little bit. So we get to know about yourself professionally. Sure, well, thank you, Audrey. And thank you to the Pittsburgh uh, Technology Council for having me and for organizing this event. I'm really delighted and especially pleased to be with you all. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're joining us from. Um, my name is Al Amud Al Thani. Um, I was born and raised in Qatar, educated in the UK, um, and I'm an economist or a development economist by trade. I am fortunate uh, in my career to have worked in roles that have furthered young people and women's progress in Qatar and beyond. Um, I worked at Silatech, uh, a nonprofit organization founded by Her Highness Sheikh Hamad bin Nasser in 2008, uh, dedicated uh, to improving and or creating employment and entrepreneurship opportunities for young people throughout the Arab world. Now, if we look at the demographics, uh, youth unemployment in the region is the highest in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, the aim of the organization was to really combat unemployment, extremism, and marginalization of young people and women, especially through economic empowerment initiatives. I was proud uh, to have spent three years of my career in Salatik. We were able to create thousands of jobs for um, Arab youth 
uh, and various uh, uh, from various backgrounds, whether they're refugees or uh, you know professionals who have lost their jobs uh, due to circumstances, or people who just don't have the skills and the capacity to basically uh, join a career. Um, and if we're looking at um, how my career has progressed, I've always worked in the same field. Today, I work at the Qatar Financial Center, which I'll be referring to as the QFC, uh, I think, throughout this interview. Uh, and my current role uh, focuses on attracting uh, foreign direct investment, both inward and outward, to and from the state of Qatar. We as a state, uh, as an organization, and me as a public servant as well, um, are cognizant of the need to prepare our future generations uh, for an era where we can't really rely on natural resources alone. And we are simultaneously aware that to ensure our status as a regional leader um, and global player in the fourth industrial revolution, we need to really adapt and take lead in promoting our country as a regional hub and incubator for the tech business and all the other main industries we're working uh, towards building as part of the economic diversification mandate and the entrepreneur spearheading it. So that's a quick introduction about myself. Oh, I hope that, it's that's happening. fabulous. That, that is fabulous. You did a beautiful job explaining that. In terms of, can you tell us a little bit about what is going on in this space in Qatar? So, you know, the entrepreneurs, and you talk about some of your success, but are there incubators? Are there, you know, can you talk a little bit about the, the sort of what's referred to as the ecosystem? Sure. I mean, before talking about, uh, you know, the ecosystem of Qatar, I think, um, as in most countries around the world, COVID has really forced, right. uh, you know, the local digital market, but also the global one, to grow up rapidly. And although there have been untold hardships and challenges as a result of the pandemic, in many ways, it has been a very effective uh, catalyst for change in Qatar. And with our populace becoming increasingly uh, digitally uh, connected and aware, and with the pandemic prompting and new investments across several verticals, you know, digitalization is really here to stay. It will continue to touch every area of our lives. And if we look at Qatar itself, it has been undergoing rapid digitalization as part of our national vision, but, uh, but it has been spearheaded by the pandemic. And this has been enabled by strategically focused government programs, which account for the bulk of digital spending in Qatar. And then of course adopted and implemented by large organizations but most importantly, it has also been organically developed by small to medium sized enterprises and startups looking uh, for new ways to survive and grow their businesses in this new post pandemic reality um, environment. So to answer your question, I think before talking about, you know, the, the accelerators and, and the environment that enables these businesses to come and flourish in a market like Qatar, I would like to talk about our role as the Qatar Financial Center, because I think that would set the scene for what we have been trying to do in this space to that would, attract- That would be wonderful. But when, let's just pause for a second though, because COVID is a global uh, pandemic. And there was something that you shared with me before we came on that I think is noteworthy that I think I'd like to share with others in terms there's a, you, the rules you've been able to get the pandemic uh, pretty much more under control than compared to where we are. We're, that we're in our second wave right here in, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, with the highest numbers that we had even uh, at, at the March levels. And I think that there, you have an app that is actually used. And, and can you just talk about that? And then we'll get right into what you've just articulated. Sure. So the app is called Ahtiraz, which means precaution in English. And it has been uh, supported by the government and then implemented uh, uh, with our basically um, a telecommunications companies. So every individual in Qatar, regardless of the type of phone you have, will need to download uh, the application in order for them to access public spaces. And it's color coded, which means that um, if you're green, you're healthy and you go anywhere. Of course, with precautionary measures in place, social distancing, wearing masks. Um, and then if you're yellow, it means that you have uh, basically interacted with someone who might have had COVID or has COVID. And until you get a COVID test and are uh, basically cleared, you will not be able to access these public spaces. And then of course the color codes go down all the way to an individual having COVID. And this is where it's red and you cannot basically go anywhere. But it's a way to basically uh, help protect uh, you know, the vulnerable groups and the population at large. Um, and I mean, in Qatar, we've seen a very, um, 
balanced approach to how we dealt with COVID. Like if we're looking at today, eight months um, since the onset of the uh, pandemic in Qatar, uh, we are at 80% capacity of individuals going back to work. Uh, you know, it's business as usual. Uh, the digitalization process has been uh, accelerated. Um, we as or the, an organization have tested this and we were able to, you know, do our work from home fully uh, 100%. But of course, I mean, the pandemic is not here to stay long term. There is light at the end of the tunnel. We are seeing, you know, vaccines, especially the Moderna one and the, the German one, uh, reaching 95% uh, uh, viability or it's working, which means that hopefully we can then, you know, go back to what business as usual means for our industry, being able to travel, being able to interact with individuals. And I think the human factor is very important, especially when you're closing deals and, and it's part of the trust, <laughs> and, you know, understanding the person in front of you. But we were, we are blessed in Qatar. And I think our role as a state as well uh, is, is beyond, you know, just thinking inwardsly. You know, Qatar has uh, supplied um, a lot of the, um, uh, you know, masks, uh, the PPP uh, products to other uh, countries that need it. And I don't know the number off of my head, but it's over 15 countries and the number keeps growing. Um, and, you know, our mandate as a country has always to work, it's the multilateral approach, right? It's how can we support other countries? How can we support others? Uh, just because we're blessed doesn't mean that we don't look beyond our own borders. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, and uh, I actually had asked asked if she could share with me the app to see if there's any way that we could leverage that. So really, really appreciate that. So that, so the, now let's let's wheel back a little bit and let's just talk about the financial center, the center, and some of the ecosystems. And you know, the mission is so important, and it's very clear in terms of what your intentions are. And and we are hoping that we solidify our relationship. With you here in Pittsburgh and and hopefully for you all around the U.S. So could you talk about that? Sure. So if uh, we look at the role of Qatar Financial Center, our government has established uh, us back in, in 2005 as an accessible platform for investors, which provides certainty for their investments. And while the platform initially uh, catered for financial services, as the name uh, points out to, Today, our platform extends far beyond financial services and in line with our national vision and the goal of diversification. We offer solutions to companies in professional services and business services, including digital companies. Uh, you know, we offer these companies services that allow investments in companies to prosper without concerns pertaining to red tape and bureaucracy. The platform, in a quick summary, provides a streamlined and transparent uh, company registration and licensing process you can own the company up to 100% um, and operate in an onshore environment. So we are a special economic zone. We're not a free zone, which means that companies can do business throughout the state of Qatar and out of the state of Qatar and benefit from the other value propositions that we offer. Companies can repatriate up to 100% of their profits. They can trade in any currency. English common law is um, our legal environment. And we have independent courts for that that enforce the law. Um, we do tax our companies 10% on corporate tax, sure. uh, on, on sourced profits, uh, but we also have double taxation agreements in place with 81 uh, countries, which means that if companies choose Qatar as a hub to access other markets, then they could be exempt from paying taxes because of that. And our unique platform really, and, and you know, in, in one sentence, facilitates easy business setup. We have a business community today of over 1,000 firms from all over the world. Companies like Oracle, Palo Alto Networks, um, CB Innovation Services, like Mahindra from India, Airbus, have registered in the QFC and on the Qatar Financial uh, Platform. And being located in Qatar's onshore business and financial center allows businesses to get a foothold on one of the world's fastest growing emerging economies. Okay and to serve the wider Minasa uh, region from Qatar. And if we look at some of, uh, you know, statistics or data, Qatar's workforce, for example, we have a multinational workforce and the ability to attract and retain talent from within the region and globally allows companies to build diverse teams in Qatar. Mm. It's ongoing efforts to provide tech training, for example, such as Microsoft's plan to train 20,000 Qataris. 
we have these kinds of agreements in place today, and we are ranked fourth in attracting talent by the INSEAD Global Talent Competitiveness Index in 2020. If we look at our education system, Qatar has an impressive education system yeah. with 15 pedigree uh, universities, including well Cornell Medical College, uh, Carnegie Mellon University um, in Qatar, um, uh, you know, uh, Texas A&M University. These are some of the U.S. Ivy League universities housed in Education City. And we are ranked 28th in enabling talent as well by the NCM Global Talent Competitiveness Index 2020. Now, if we look at Carnegie Mellon specifically, um, it was uh, established in 2004 in Qatar under the auspices of the Qatar Foundation. And basically the, the, the mandate was to bring CMU's creative visionary approach uh, to help Qatar's drive for knowledge and advancement uh, become achievable. Uh, today, Carnegie Mellon Qatar offers undergraduate programs in biological sciences, uh, business administration, uh, computational biology, computer science, and IT. And we have more than 400 students from 52 countries that call Carnegie Mellon Qatari, Qatar home. Mm -hmm. So if you look at you know, the education, the talent, the ability to attract talent, and the environment, it's all here in Qatar. And I think that gives you know, a very um, a unique perspective to companies that are looking uh, to go global. And, um, and yeah, I mean, ideas thrive in places where it's easy to collaborate and do business. Skilled immigration is simple. Access to financing and talent is enabled. The market is unsaturated in Qatar and it's full of opportunities. And the government is very supportive. And Qatar really ticks all of these boxes. Well, you know, uh, last year, Carnegie Mellon when they had their graduation ceremonies, I actually zoomed in into Qatar's graduation because a friend of mine and one of our members was speaking at the commencement services. And, I, and for the computational sciences, I was just blown away by the number of women that were represented in the graduating class, which is something that apparently is a tremendous focus there and has been tremendously uh, you know, capable, and it was not the first year that it reflected, I think, it definitely more than half the grads, if not 70% were women. Correct, and this is part as well of Qatari women seizing the opportunities to play a role in the country's future. As you correctly stated, 63% of that? students at Carnegie Mellon University Qatar are women. Right. But if you look at Texas A&M in engineering, it's 50%. And you know, these figures demonstrate the drive that Qatari women have to better themselves and forge careers. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is all thanks as well to Her Highness, uh, to Her Highness's vision and Her Highness's support uh, to ensure uh, you know, uh, that women have equal opportunity uh, in terms of human and community development uh, mm -hmm. and access uh, uh, you know, through that vision. Right, I saw that, I saw that firsthand. And, and uh, that's fabulous. I think there's a question though, Jonathan, from Jim Moore, that Absolutely. maybe all you know would like to answer. Love it. We have another one from Lou Camarillo as well. Yeah. So uh, several years ago, uh, Jim was looking at advertising on Al Jazeera. Does the QFC look at the media vertical and does it leverage Al Jazeera platform? <laughs> So, I mean, as a Qatar Financial Center, of course, we leverage on uh, media and advertising because that's how we can reach, you know, a mass audience and reach the right types of audiences for the industries we're looking to develop. But um, Al Jazeera is a national or it's an independent media agency and, and platform operating out of the state of Qatar. Uh, we don't have a relationship with Al Jazeera. We mostly have a relationship with media agencies that can put you know, the investment and the business uh, word out there. So we have partnerships with Bloomberg. Mm -hmm. We have partnerships with uh, the Wall Street Journal um, and other media agencies. I mean, it depends on the region we're trying to target um, and so on. But very recently as well, the government launched the investment promotion agency, Qatar, which acts as the commercial and um, um, basically branding arm uh, on behalf of all the existing platforms, uh, licensing platforms of Qatar to put the word out there. But as Qatar Financial Center, we do cater for that industry. So if he is a company that, uh, or if it is a company that would like to access a market like Qatar, then yes, it is a permitted activity and they can benefit from the propositions um, I have uh, aforementioned. Excellent. And then, uh, 
Luke, Luke Hammerlingo has a question here. He says he's been fortunate to have visited Doha. He says, are there specific sizes or types of businesses that QFC is seeking to attract? So in Qatar Financial Center, we attract all sizes and any type of company that fits within the remit of our permitted scope of activities. Uh, we are, our mandate is basically to attract the world's most vibrant and innovative companies to come and invest in Qatar, to consider Qatar as their hub for doing business within the Middle East um, and on the wider Asian continent. Um, as I mentioned, our mission is to facilitate the strengthening of our international economic partnerships as well by providing an effective and efficient framework for any companies, commercial enterprises to come and do business in this region. We have launched uh, five accelerator and incubation programs in partnership with the Qatar Development Bank and other players, depending on the industry. One of them is the sports, uh, Qatar Sports Tech Accelerator, and this provides funding, or funding, mentorship, and basically a licensing and a commercial solution for companies that you know, enter into that program. And this is where we welcome uh, you know, companies uh, that require this type of support to look into these programs. Another accelerator is around fintech, um, same approach. Uh, the third is around digital. The fourth is around localization. So as you know, Qatar is heavily reliant on the oil and gas industry uh, when it comes to the economy. And we are working as well with all the Q companies and the main Q players, such as Uritu, our telecommunications uh, company, such as you know, our sovereign wealth fund, such as you know, the banks. Um, etc. to help localize the entire supply chain. And these are valued at around overall at 160 billion US dollars of opportunities. Mm -hmm. So companies can access those opportunities if they choose to, you know, come, establish presence in Qatar and, you know, bid for these projects mm -hmm. and perhaps win them and make right. Qatar a market for them. Excellent. And we have one more, and I think we're back to you, Audrey. What, what, what's next on deck for you? Is there you? a question? If not, is there a question there? I didn't. I think, yeah, we're good to go. Okay. All right. So when in, in terms of the conversations that we've had in Pittsburgh, where do you see some natural alignments? Are there some things that sort of come to the top in terms of the information that we've shared with you in your research? I mean, sure, uh, looking at the growing digital sector, it already provides a ready opportunity for Pittsburgh tech companies, uh, such as the winners, for example, um, of the uh, Tech 50 competition to expand to the Middle East market. Right. But any company that's joining us today that is in the industry uh, that would like to basically, uh, you know, access a market like ours, access the opportunities, we invite them. Uh, to participate, whether in our accelerator programs and you know, around sport, digital, fintech, etc., or to come and benefit from the opportunities that are available. We also invite, you know, everyone watching to come and visit Qatar and explore it for themselves and explore the opportunities for themselves. But maybe I think it would give a clearer uh, idea uh, to those, uh, you know, joining us today, uh, why Qatar, you know, even though small in size, could act you know, as an enabler for companies to access a wider uh, regional market. And at the end of the day, we've spoken about this, Audrey, that for right. businesses, it's always about profit, right? Profit right. is profit everywhere. And access is important. And sustainability and anchoring companies within those environments is crucial, which is why we as the Qatar Financial Center and as a country have prioritized FDI. And, you know, our 160 billion market or economy allows companies basically with its onshore capabilities to access those opportunities, but to look beyond. And we as QFC serve as a springboard to investors who wish to tap uh, into other regional markets that Qatar has a strong G2G a relationship with. Uh, you know, we do provide, and I'm not just saying this because I work in this organization, but we do provide a world-class legal, regulatory tax and business right. environment. And we allow companies, you know, to come and, and benefit from this. Mm -hmm. uh, through establishing. And if we look at the numerous advantages that we offer, which allows us to act as a regional hub, you know, 60% of the world population is within eight hours of flying time from Qatar. Qatar Airways, our national airline carrier, with more than 160 direct destinations, provides links both regionally and globally, allowing Qatar to become an effective hub to serve the Middle East, Africa, Asia, and Europe. 
You know, our 5G connectivity and 4G networks allows companies amidst this crisis to also continue business as usual through connectivity um, and so on. With English as the working language in Qatar, it also allows for ease of transactions. You know, our multinational workforce, which I've touched upon earlier, adds to the language and cultural skills available in Qatar. Our tax environment with low corporate taxes yeah, and zero great. personnel taxes offers an attractive hub for company headquarters and, and talent relocation when compared uh, to peers in the region that are sharply raising taxes um, of all kinds. And our legal framework basis is English from the law, which offers a very well understood and stable environment on which companies can trade with confidence. We're also very aware that, you know, for, this, for our success as a country, um, and for the success of our digital industry, both homegrown and international, a solid legal and policy regime around digital is essential. And we have made key steps in this regard through, its, through our promotion and development of digital economy enablers. Um, and these are supported by the strong regulatory and governance framework to aid digital adoption, enabled uh, via open uh, data policy, IP rights, which are widely considered to be the best in the region, and the ease with which companies in Qatar are able to export IP, e-participation policy, uh, digital privacy, cybersecurity law, and the national AI strategy. And you know, if we look at all of this, the environment is enabling mm -hmm. for tech companies to come and establish presence in a sound environment you know, that does not mix politics with economics. Right. In a trustworthy no, jurisdiction, true. we have. No, that's beautifully put, and that perfectly aligns with the work that we do here at the Tech Council. That's why I'm pretty excited. Jonathan, there's one more question that, yeah. yeah. Uh, here's a, actually, this is a really great one from Peggy McGarry. She says, hello from California University of Pennsylvania. She says they have the only 100% online Arabic bachelor's and master's degree in the world. Um, its students are from around the world and are required to do internships. Would QFC have internship opportunities for students? Ah, definitely. I mean, if you look at the composition of the QFC, we are four um, entities under the umbrella of the Qatar Financial Center. One of them is the Qatar Finance and Business Academy. Um, and as organizations, as the regulatory authority, as the financial authority, as the uh, courts, internship is a program that we have embedded as part of our core values to develop young talent and to ensure that uh, you know our return to the community is far beyond just attracting business and retaining talent. So we will be happy to talk. I mean, I cannot promise anything uh, during this, uh, this webinar, but, uh, but students are welcome uh, to look at the opportunities and to apply. And if they fit uh, the form of what we're looking for, then definitely. But that is an open uh, country and uh, you know, individuals are welcome to even seize opportunities beyond the Qatar Financial Center. So Alanud, as we come as we come to the end of this fabulous discussion, and it makes me miss travel, and it makes me wish that I could, I could be there, and I know we will one day. So, what are some of the ways, like right now, start, starting today, what are some of the ways that we can help facilitate connections, introductions with businesses, and continue to foster our relationship? I'm confident that I know that you and our team will. But how do we take that? and take it to the next level? Well, we have a website that's accessible by everyone. We are happy to work with you, Audrey, and to anyone who is really interested in tapping into these opportunities. We are happy to host closed webinars with targeted uh, companies in certain verticals within the digital industry and the tech industry. Um, you know, time is of the essence for a country like Qatar. We are hosting the 2022 FIFA World Cup, and this is in less than a year and a half. Right. And that, you know, provides a unique opportunity to develop new growth sectors right. and to right. demonstrate Qatar's commitment to development, innovation, and hospitality on a global scale. Um, and we offer a vast investment opportunities across a variety of other sectors, as mentioned. Mm -hmm. So until mm -hmm. travel is permitted again, which I hope will be soon, um, I mean, we are happy to continue the discussion online. My contacts, I mean, I have a public profile on almost every social media account. Companies are and individuals are more than welcome to reach out to myself, to any individual from the QFC. Um, our website allows for companies to basically uh, register their interest and book appointments. But uh, our accelerator programs have not been hindered by the pandemic. And this is where I invite 
companies that fit the portfolio of what these accelerators are looking for to go online, to basically apply if they're interested. And I mean, in Qatar, it's business as usual. And I assume it's the same for companies, you know, that want to remain in right. business. Right, right. Well, we are going to make sure that we're sharing the information and we're going to stay connected to Shika Alamud and make sure that these partnerships are actually very, very strong and consistent because we can't, you know, just because there is COVID and we can't travel and, and Qatar Airlines is, by the way, is a, is a fabulous airline. So if you've never flown on that, it's uh, an amazing service. And uh, my point here is that we are here to ensure prosperity. We're here to ensure growth. And the only way that we can do that is not just sell inside Pittsburgh, the same thing as what's happening in Qatar. They need to make sure that they are part of the world. And as you can hear by Alanu today, she has brought an immense amount of professionalism and passion around prosperity that we share. And I cannot thank you all for joining, You know, can't thank you enough for joining us today. This is really important, but it's only the beginning. It's only the beginning. And if you want to know more, and if you want to think about other ways that we can stay connected, she already shared with you all the ways that she is accessible, her organization is accessible, and we are going to work together with her and her team. And that is our proclamation and commitment. And you can tell that I'm pretty honored to have uh, you know, forged this relationship. Again, thanks to Kathy Risco from our sister cities to who has connected us. But we have, we have new friends. And these friends are interested in the same thing that we're interested in. It's prosperity, it's customers, it's business development, and it's access to the world. So Alanud, thank you so much for being with us. People are asking us questions. We will stay connected to you. I appreciate you spending, it's now 8.30 PM your time. So I know you, hopefully you're winding down your day, but know that we are only a Zoom call away and uh, everyone knows where to reach out to her, but we, this is just the beginning of our relationship. So thank you so much. It's always wonderful to talk to you. And as everyone can hear, she has a wealth of information and she has lots of people around her that help support make this magic work. So thank you. Thank, so you. Much. thank you. Thank you, everyone. And we will see you today. I, you know, sometimes all of me, the days blur for me here. So I always have to ask Jonathan, what day is today? It's Thursday. Who do, have, who do we have tomorrow, Jonathan? Friday, we have Christy Offelman from Edge Women's Leadership Program stopping ah. by to talk about the latest cohorts and opportunities. Right. Can't wait to have Christy. She's super awesome. Alanu, that's a great pr program that we run, and we're going to just peel back tomorrow and uh, do a little bit of what we call a deep dive to talk about that program. Well, it's our pleasure, and we look forward to basically building upon what we have discussed and to possibly meeting soon in person. Yes. Thank you so much for hosting. Stay I'm safe. Here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Really appreciate it. You guys.